Hi. Today we are going to learn how to classify dogs. So basically we will use the NAS large model and we'll do some transfer learning. So we will basically use the, the backbone of this model and we will retrain it using our own images. So as the result, we will take a fresh image like this dog, run through a prediction using our uh, train, uh, train uh, model and we will get the right uh, class. This is another example of another dog breed and we will uh, classify its uh, type of uh, dog. So uh, let's start coding. So the next, pa next phase of course will be downloading uh, the dog's uh, images. So let's uh, go to a uh, Kegel and uh, let's look for dog breed ide identification go to the data tab as you can see there are 120 types of classes as uh, it's divided to a train folder and test folder so if i uh, go along this folder you can see many many images and these are the classes, the 120 classes. And you can see the, that uh, there is a CSV file. So for each of the images, each of the files, there is the relevant uh, label. So let's download these uh, files. And I already, as you can see, I already downloaded it and put it on a folder called dog breed identification. So here are the labels. So we have to run through this file and get for each image its correct label. As you can see in my GitHub, I will leave the two images for the prediction as part of the, the code. So let's create our first uh, Python uh, program. It will be prepare the data. This is the link for the data set, so you can uh, download the images uh, and, and use this uh, model as well. So the, all the images will be converted uh, to this uh, image size, 331 on 331. Then let's uh, create a variable with the path for our train images and the labels. Now let's load the CSV file. As I said earlier, uh, each of the file has its own um, label. So for the training, we need, uh, sorry, for, for each of the images, we need the correct uh, label. So we had to, to read the label CSV and pass each of the rows, each row in this uh, CSV file. So we will create a data frame based on pandas and let's load the CSV file. First of all, let's print it. And let's print also the describe of the data frame. We also can use a group by command just to see some number of how many images we have for each of the breeds. We will show only the, the first the 10, uh, 10 results. So as you can see, the CSV, CSV file is based on ID and breed, and we have more than 10,000 uh, images and this is uh, the, the first uh, 10 breeds with the number of how many images we have for each label. Let's for example display one of the images. It's just a, a testing to see that everything is okay with the loading. 
So we will use OpenCV to load an image and display the image. We will use the IM read to load an image, the IM show to display the image, and the wake, wait key to pause until a clicking of any of the keyboards. As you can see, we can display the image and everything looks nice. So let's continue for the next step. Now we run through our CSV file and load each of the each of the images in the CSV file and we will create two NumPy array. One will be a, a NumPy array for the images and uh, the next one will be the NumPy array of the labels. So each of the images uh, will have one label in the all label uh, NumPy array. So uh, in order to do that we are uh, coding a, a very simple lo a, a for loop. This for loop will run through each of the rows in the data frame and retrieve its values. Now we are creating a, a variable for the full path for each of the images, which is a compound composed of the, the name of the folder plus the image name plus the dot jpg and as for now let's just print the name of the image and run it okay let's continue as you can see we have the full name of the of each of the ten thousands uh, images now we have to load the image as we did done it uh, previously with our uh, sample image so we would like to uh, import the image and resize it to our image size and then we append it into our number array so the resized image which is an image that was uh, transformed or, or resized to 331 to by 331 will be inserted to the all images NumPy array and for each of the image, we also insert the relevant label. So after the for loop, let's print the amount of the images and the amount of the labels. That's just to double check that everything uh, finished correctly. We have to see more than 10,000 uh, of uh, records. And the next process would be saving uh, those two NumPy array. So let's save it on a temporary folder. As for the images, we will name it all dogs images dot npy y. And for the labels, let's name it all dogs labels dot npy y. Okay, let's run it. We have an error loading the image. Yeah, I have a mistake. We have uh, to change it from comma to to a dot. So now it's running smoothly, and as you can see, it's the process is ongoing, and we are creating the image numpy array, and next would be the labels numpy array. It's being saved right now. Okay, this process took about. Uh, 10 more seconds but as you can see we have two files one is the images and the next one is the labels okay next is creating uh, step number two which is uh, creating or adjusting the nasnet large model as the previous python program we are importing uh, NumPy and we will use the same image size so we can copy paste it okay next is the bit size that means that all the images would be split to a packages of eight images let's load our uh, two NumPy files very simple process of uh, np.load 
one for the images and one for the labels. Let's print the shape. We are expecting uh, to see shapes of uh, 10 thousands uh, dot uh, uh, 331, 331 and 3 it's the channels, 3 color channels. Okay, that's good. Next, uh, we would like to convert the labels from a text, that means the names of the, the dog's breed, to an integer. So, uh, first of all, let's uh, uh, print the all labels so you can see what, uh, what do I mean when I say that it's uh, now on a, on a character or, or on a text and then we will print it again after it's been converted to integers. So, we will use the sknLearn uh, label encode function and we will use the fit uh, transform uh, to convert it from text to uh, integer as you can see this is before and this is the after it was converted for example a Boston Bull was converted to an integer of 19 okay the next process we will yeah would like to understand how many unique values of labels we have in our data set we are expecting to see the 122 um, different uh, categories but uh, we, we need to be accurate so let's run the unique function and run it on our integer labels and figure out if we had if we have 120 classes yes okay that's good and let's continue we will use this variable for our model it's instead of using hard-coded uh, the 120 hard-coded value now let's convert it to categorical. Categorical is a process for our model. Um, that means that uh, all the integer numbers will be between, uh, um, it's not between, it would be zero or one for each of the 120 uh, possibilities. So we will use the two categorical uh, function from the Keras utils and we will send our integer labels and the number of classes which is 120. Uh, I think that uh, before normalizing the the images let's run it until this step that's just to figure out that we are on the right path let's wait a few more seconds right okay all the labels are 0 or 1 okay next let's uh, normalize all the images uh, of course each of the images has value between 0 and 255 and for the model we need to normalize the data between 0 and 1 so we have to divide it to 255.0 remember the dot zero because we need and uh, a float values so after the images were converted now we are going to split all the 10,000 uh, images between a, an X test and sorry uh, between train and test the X would be the images and the Y would be the labels and we'll split it uh, by uh, the value of uh, 0.3 that means that 30% of the images would be for test and 17% uh, percent would be for the train so let's run the results. We will print the shapes of the X train and the Y train, which are the train the train for the images and train for the labels and the correspond for the test and X test and Y test. So let's run it. The speed of the process is dependent of your GPU card. So it, maybe you should uh, wait a few more seconds for the results. Good, okay. The results are okay. Let's continue for the next uh, step. So 
since the process takes a, a too much memory, I will delete the, the, let's say, variables that are not relevant for the next phases. I recommend you to do the same, same thing unless you have a very powerful uh, GPU card. Okay, now let's define the relevant uh, model layers. We will use flatten and uh, dense layers. We will end it, edit, sorry, edit by the end of the model. And also let's uh, import the NASNet model. You can follow this uh, coding, a very simple one. So let's define a class, we will call it a my model. It will be based on the NASLARD function. The input shape will be our uh, relevant uh, shape for the model. The, the model was trained originally on this shape and it was trained on the ImageNet, uh, the ImageNet uh, images. And we have to add the value include top false if we would like to add more layers for our uh, dog images. Next, we would like to freeze all the layers since uh, the weights are uh, being trained for, uh, for the image net. So we would like to use the pre-trained -pre models and the relevant weights. So we will uh, define as trainable false. So all the weights will remain. And now we will add a few more layers and let's first of all define these layers and then we will end it, add it uh, on the end of the model. So let's name the first uh, layer as a plus flatten layer. That means that we are creating a new layer called flatten and we will add this flatten after the my model output. Now we will add another layer, call it prediction. This is only a, a, a name for the layer, but basically what's important is that it is a dense layer with the 120 categories and the activation function is softmax, softmax, which is relevant for categorical model. And we are adding the plus fat flatten layer. That means that basically we will have a model that is based on the NAS large model with two more layers. One would be the flatten layer and the last one will be our dense layer. Next, we are creating an instance of uh, this model and pre printing the summary. The result of the summary function uh, would be presenting the full layers of the NAS large model plus two more layers, the flatten layer and the dense layer. So we are uh, waiting for the, uh, the split process. Let's wait a few more seconds. Okay, and now it model will be printed. I mean, the structure of the model will be printed. As you can see, it's many layers, but the two last one is the flatten and the dense. Hope you can see that. And the dense has 120 classes, which is our required dog breed images. Okay, the next process. Let's create an optimizer. We will use the Adam. Let's define a, le a learning rate. And let's, now let's create a, a variable that contains the Adam with our learning rate. We will compile our model. The loss function will be categorical cross entropy, which is a, a very typical uh, uh, argument for classification. The optimizer is the one that we defined a few uh, seconds ago, and the metrics will be accuracy. Let's define two more variables. One would be steps per epoch, which this value is basically how many samples we have divided on the bed size. 
this would be for the uh, training and the next one would be for the test which is validation steps and this uh, the value will be the x test uh, the amount of sample uh, divided by the bed size which is eight next let's uh, define an early stopping and we will follow um, let's say three types of uh, of values or, or or variables one will be a model checkpoint and the next will be reduce uh, plateau and the third is will be early stopping first of all the name of the model that will be stored um, during the training let's call it dogs.h5 and what we are basically doing right now is saving the model to this file only if the weights are better better than the previous one the function of reduce plateau would be changing we, we will change the learn, learning rate by this factor um, if we can see that uh, um, there was not improvement. So we will wait three epochs and if what was no improvement, we can uh, twist a little bit the learning rate by a factor of 0 0.1. And the last one is early stopping. If we can see there was no improvement during seven epochs, then we will stop training. Good. Now it's the fit function. We are ready for the training process and we can send all the relevant arguments to the fit function. So we will send the x-train, which are the train images, the x-test, which are the labels, the so it's not X test, of course, it should be the Y train. Now the validation data is the X test and the Y test. Epochs, let's try it on 30 epochs. The bed size is the, uh, it's the value of eight and the step store epochs, we defined it earlier. The validation uh, steps, we defined it earlier. And let's define the callbacks, which are the early stopping process. And I think we are ready. We can run the full process. So if everything is okay, the training process will start. So uh, as for now, it's depend on your GPU card. If you have a high, a high volume of VRAM, it will take, a, let's say a, an hour or two in, in my GPU card, which is based on the uh, 12 uh, VRAM, it took about five hours. So after the process will end, we will get this screen. As you can see, it's the, the validation accuracy is about 80%, which is uh, very good. And we are expecting to see the docs.h5 in our folder as well. Let's look for the file. Very nice. So we finished the training and now we are ready to test our model. So as I mentioned earlier, we have two fresh images that the model never seen the, those images before and we will uh, write a, a third Python a program that load these images and run a prediction and we are expecting to see the, the name of this dog, the name of the breed of these dogs. So 
So first of all, let's load our model from the folder. Let's copy and paste it. And let's lo load the model using the Keras load model function. And just to figure out that everything is okay, once again, let's print the summary of the loaded model. And let's look for the, I uh, have a syntax error here. Okay, now it's okay. Uh, we have to add models dot before the load model. Okay, now we are ready. Let's run it and we are expecting to see the, the same model structure with the last there of the 120 classes. Cool, okay. Let's continue. Okay, next the input shape uh, should be the same as the trainable images. Now let's uh, also uh, extract the, all the unique categories. So it will help us to, to get the, the text for each of the, of the dog uh, breeds. So we will store it on a, on a variable called categories. So the categories basically will be 120 text values. Now we'll create a function to help us uh, uh, to load an image and prepare it for our prediction. We will resize each of the images to our required size. And the next process is more important. Each image has a shape of uh, 331 by 331 by 3 and we should create a batch of images. So we have to create a batch of images that each batch has only one image. This is the purpose of expand dims. And then we are uh, normalizing the image between zero and one. So this is the purpose of uh, this function, creating or, or transforming our required image for the prediction. So next, this is the path for our a fresh image. It's called Irish Water Spaniel 1.png. Now we are using OpenCV to load the image. And next, we are running through our uh, function. So the image for model would be an image that is prepared for the prediction. Now it's the prediction step. We are sending the image to the prediction to the predict, uh, sorry, function, and we're getting a result into the result array. We will use the argmax. So basically we have a lot of uh, answers, a lot of uh, results, and we would like to get the higher, the, the position of the highest value of the uh, prediction. And the value is 58. 58 is a, a value between 0 and 120 uh, categories. This 58 has the highest prediction from our model. And now we would like to understand what is the uh, real text or the real label of this uh, 38, uh, sorry, a 58 uh, value. So we will uh, convert it to text and extract it from our categories array. Once again, let's, let's run the prediction and now we are getting the relevant category between 0 and 120. As you can see, it's an Irish water spaniel. That means that the model predicted, predict uh, the image correctly. So now let's uh, uh, display the image and also we would like to display the text and the prediction text along with this image. So we will use the put text. This function gets the, the image, the text, the position for the text, the relevant font, the color, how thick should be the text. So it's an OpenCV function and it helps us to uh, display text on an image. As you can see, the prediction is very good. Let's try it on the next image. Let's replace the, the path for the image. Once again, let's copy paste the, the path. 
and let's run it again. Hope you enjoy this tutorial. You are most welcome to subscribe and share this uh, tutorial. Thank you very much. Bye bye.